Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about biogeochemical cycle, especially hydrological cycle. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So the term biogeochemical is derived from three words: bio, which means living organisms, geo which means soil, rock, etc. and chemicals, which means elements. So, certain elements circulate between the organism and environment in circular paths. That is referred to as biogeochemical cycles. And the elements on earth is conserved, right? All elements on earth are conserved. Uh, since elements can neither be created nor destroyed, these are recycled in various ways. So let's talk about types of biogeochemical cycles. So there are two types of biogeochemical cycles. First is the gaseous cycles and second is the sedimentary cycles. So what is gaseous cycles? Now uh, the cycles of carbon, nitrogen and oxygen are classified under gaseous cycle. Since these elements have a main reservoir in the gaseous phase. Now, water occurs in three phases, that is a liquid, solid as ice and gaseous as water vapor. So, the liquid phase is most vital, right? It is most vital for living organisms. And the gaseous phase is required for cycling. And since the main reservoir of water is not the gaseous phase, uh, the water cycle is therefore considered as hydrological cycle. And what is sedimentary cycles? So the cycles of sulfur and phosphorus are classified under sedimentary cycles since they are found in soil and sediments. Now, water is a universal solvent. Therefore, its importance is obvious to everybody. Now, the continuous movement of water on, above and below the surface of the earth is called hydrological cycle. Now, during this process, water changes its state from one phase to another. However, the total number of water particles remains constant. Now, let's talk about the stages of water cycle. Okay, so four stages evaporation. Now, solar energy causes water to evaporate from Earth's surface. So, water evaporates in the form of water vapor which is gradually accumulated in the air. When evaporation occurs through the leaves of plants, it also accompanies transpiration. And this process is called evapotranspiration, which draws large amount of water in the air. Next is sublimation. So sublimation is the process of snow and ice changing into water vapor in the air without first melting into water. And it occurs due to the flow of dry winds and low humidity. And uh, sublimation readily occurs in mountain peaks where the air pressure is low. Sublimation process is increased by lower air pressure since less energy is required. Less 
energy is required in this process. Next process is condensation. Okay. So the water vapor that is accumulated in the air gradually cools down since the lower temperature is predominated in the high altitude. Now condensation of water leads to the formation of tiny droplets of water eventually which form cloud. Next step is precipitation. Within a cloud, water droplets attach with each other, causing the droplets to grow. Right? Now, when these water droplets become too heavy to stay suspended in the cloud, they fall out of the clouds as rain. This process is called rainfall or precipitation. In extremely cold weather, Water droplets freeze and fall as snow. Next process is infiltration. So infiltration is the process which describes the absorption of water into ground. And the degree of absorption is variable. And dependent on the material through which water gets seeped into the ground. For example, soil retains comparatively more water than rocks. Groundwater is held by the body of rocks or sediments. Those are called aquifers. And the next step is runoff. So, if the water is not stored in aquifers, it follows gravity, such as flowing down from mountains and gradually forming rivers. So, this process is termed as rainoff. So, we can see here the whole stuff, evaporation, transpiration, Sublimation, condensation, precipitation, infiltration and runoff. Whole stuff we can see here and these water bodies are aquifers. Okay, now let's talk about the significance of water cycle. So, since evaporation occurs, the temperature of earth remains cool. Water cycle is essential for all living organisms to survive. In polluted areas, the rain droplets attach themselves onto dust, various gases, bacteria, smokes, industrial particles and pollutants, which eventually fall from the cloud as rain. So this process cleans the air. 